Aloha. Aloha. Hi, and welcome to my live stream. My name is Master Paul. And I'm very honored and grateful to have joined here. Today is September 2nd, 2016. And today is an additional show on the subject of relationships. Soul operation to my phone. Security changing blockages so that we have a clear show. And this show will be on the subject of personal relationships. The relationships that typically come when they uh, when we have a spouse, um, lover, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. These kinds of relationships tend to bring a great deal of joy and love and trouble depending on how we approach it. So in relationship we tend to have a lot of the areas that we need to clean up show up and we're going to talk about today why that is and how we can use soul power to help transform those kinds of blockages. So welcome Kristen Ross, welcome Don. Uh, great to see both of you. Welcome Patricia Dickinson and Johnny. Great to see you as well. I'm uh, letting everyone catch up and jump on in there. Hopefully my phone will uh, catch up speed as well pretty soon here. And so as we are waiting for others to catch up, I will continue to talk a little bit about nature of relationships. Everyone everything has a soul in Dr. and Master Shah's teachings. And so when people talk about the word soul, um, they, they don't really know that a relationship could have a soul. It's new information for them. <coughs> so I'm going to ask the Divine Healing Hand Healers to please offer a blessing to my phone and to the uh, internet connection so that the phone does not skip. Uh, please do that now. That will help a lot so I can stay focused on teaching, sharing, and blessing. And so welcome, Rushi. Welcome, uh, Cheryl. And welcome, Stephanie. Great to see you as well. So the nature of relationships is that they bring to us the closest people in our world. If we have difficulties in relationship, difficulties in finding that mate, that perfect one, if we have uh, relationships in which they get started and it looks good and then it, it hiccups. This is all versions of relationship karma or what is also known as spiritual debt. And in Dr. Master Shah's teachings, everything has a soul, soul over matter. And so when we transform the soul first, then the energy and the matter will follow. The mind and body will follow. But when we say that a relationship has a soul, for a lot of people, that's a, that's a, that's a little eyebrow raiser. Uh, anybody that's been following the teachings of Master Shah, they don't question it. But we're starting to have new students watch this as this wisdom is starting to be spread. And so I have to speak to them as well. And so in Dr. Master Shah's teaching, everything has the spark or spirit of the divine in it. Every speck of energy, every speck of matter. That means a mountain has a soul, a river has a soul. That means the ant, the piece of rock that the ant is walking across, has a soul. It means this microphone in front of me here also does. Another teaching that Master Shah uh, speaks of is that every soul serves and every soul has a purpose and that is to serve. So when we start to put the two of them together, that everything is from Creator, every speck of energy and matter that makes up the sand, that makes up this piece of plastic and metal that's called a microphone, that makes up you and me, and everything has spirit in it, we can start to grasp the probability that everything has a soul. Now, I have went through quite a bit of training with Dr. and Master Shah, so I no longer even question that. I, I actually never questioned it in the beginning. I just knew innately that that was true. But for all those that are new, it's very important to grasp that. Now, that also means that things that are not tangible also have a soul. What are some things that are not tangible? Anger, relationships, uh, air, okay? 
these are things that necessarily can't be seen. Now, you can see air if it's dirty, but certainly can't see it if it's clean. And so everything has a soul. Thoughts have a soul. Possibilities have a soul. What does something come into? How does a physical manifestation occur? How does the idea for a computer or a locomotive train occur? They occur because a thought occurred first. Where did the thought originate at? It originated in all that was originally here, Creator. It was in the field of emptiness and it manifested as a thought from that field of emptiness. And then somebody put enough power and pressure into it, enough focus into it, that it eventually came into a physical form. So everything has a soul, including the soul of relationships. Now in the last couple of days, we focused on uh, loving ourself. We have a soul, and most of us do not pay much attention to our own soul. But it's important to have a very good, loving connection with our own self and our own soul. And I want to acknowledge, uh, take a moment and pause and acknowledge uh, Suki, Ivan, Hilal, and Patricia, and Carol, Tatiana, Crystal. Great to see you all. Thank you so much for joining. Feel free to hit the share button so other people can become aware of today's live stream. So when we uh, recognize first and foremost that we are a soul having a physical experience we are a soul first and this experience is temporary our soul is forever we are so bogged down in this physical world worrying about Who's going to be our next boyfriend? Does somebody love me? What I'm going to have for dinner? Uh, I can't believe that person said that to me. You know, uh, my cat's throw up, throwing up on the floor, whatever the worry is for that moment, because this is the realm we are at in the moment. But remember, we are a soul having a physical experience. And as such, when we take the time to connect to ourselves at the level that is origination, the level of our soul, we can solve a lot of problems. So when I started this, uh, this series on relationships two days ago, that is why I started with self-love and healing your connection with your soul. Because when we don't love ourselves the way divine loves us, because divine loves us unconditionally, um, it's not really, a, it's, it's more than a knowing of that. You have to go into a place of being with it. You can hear the words. I can read the words from many thousands of books out there that talk about unconditionally loving ourselves. But why do we find it so difficult to do so? What we have been taught and accepted from peers, parents, uh, uh, theosophical societies, belief systems, whatever it might be, we've accepted those as truth. We have to unaccept those and accept the one truth that Creator loves us unconditionally. And we do that simply by staying connected to that soul. We always want to ask forgiveness of our own soul for the uh, duration of suffering that we have brought to it. In other words, we're here experiencing a life on its behalf and it hopes that we will wake up. Our soul hopes that our heart will open, that, it will, that we will recognize our own divinity, our own purity. Our soul hopes that we will be able to listen more attentively to what it's saying. Don't do that. That's not going to help you. Don't eat that food. You'll be sick later. That person over there, that's, that's the right person. You should go talk to that person. But we let our mind or ego get in the way. So we want to pay more attention to our soul. And when we do, when we do, we are rewarded by having a much higher connection to source. This then leads into our relationship to everybody else. Think about it. If we do not have a good connection with our own soul and with the source, then that means we do not have a very open heart. Our heart may be a quarter open, a half open, three quarter open, varying degrees for all of us, and it often opens and then closes depending upon how we bring ourselves to life. I have an entire series I'm not going to go into today, 
but I've learned a lot of wisdom on it. And when I say an entire series, it's on the soulmate attraction system. I'm still working on aspects of it today. I'm always adjusting it. But in working with a lot of different clients, there's one very true statement uh, of many, but one of them is that when we take care of our connection to our soul, when we fill our heart by opening our heart, doing the uh, open our heart practices, doing whatever it takes to keep our heart open, to keep it open in the face of trauma and the face of uh, things outside of us that that in the past may have impacted us when we do our best to keep our heart open what happens is we can start to understand that everything is in divine timing everything is part of divine flow everything has a karmic association to it by maintaining this open heart and operating in a place of um, responsibility. Responsibility for staying connected to the divine. Responsibility for practices. Responsibility for asking for forgiveness. Responsibility for um, receiving something from somebody else and taking it personally, therefore closing our heart. We have to recognize that that wasn't the wisest choice for us, that it did not help us. When we start at, from the point of taking responsibility for our soul and our soul journey, then we can start filling our heart with the Divine's love. When we fill our heart with the Divine's love, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, then, then we can be fully available to anybody else that comes into our field, our children our spouse, the boss, the best friend, the person at work that keeps trying to thwart you and undercut you. Everybody you have relationships with, but how we bring ourselves to any one of those relationships starts here. It starts in the heart and it starts with our connection to ourself and with the divine. So when we talk about loving self, it's really about unwinding and releasing all of those things from the past that, is, that, that we have adopted and accepted as truth that are truly not real. And that includes a belief system that you are not worthy, that you are a sinner, that you cannot do enough to, be, to receive the divine's love. It includes anything where you look in the mirror and you say, oh, this wrinkle, oh, this gray hair. Ah, oh, I'm flabby. Anything of that nature is not loving yourself. Therefore, you're closing your heart. Therefore, you are not aligning to the divine. The divine doesn't uh, sit on top of, uh, of heaven and look down and go, ah, she's getting a little flabby. Yeah, getting a little gray hair. Yeah, no, I'm not going to love that one any longer. The divine doesn't do that. We do that to ourselves. You see how silly it is? You're laughing right now. Because... That doesn't happen at the level of the divine. We do these things to ourselves. We have to love ourselves the same way the divine loves us. We have to open our heart the way the divine opens this heart to all of us. So when we look in the mirror, when we self-talk negatively, we have to stop and catch it. We have to go, oh, I see you. That negative thought, that negative perspective, does it have a soul? What do you think? Yes, yes, it has a soul. Everything has a soul. Perspective has a soul. Possibilities have a soul. Thoughts have a soul. We live in a world in which what we place our focus upon has a propensity of coming to us. And as we move forward, through uh, this major, major, very special time on earth, we are moving from a world of physical manifestation to a world of angelic. We are moving to a higher frequency where manifestations happen just by thought very quickly. And within a hundred years, we'll be in that fourth dimension in which you think about it and it occurs. We cannot afford to think about unpleasant things for ourselves and disconnect from our soul. We have to be much more responsible 
I come back to that word. Because self-responsibility is what allows us to fill our heart with God's love. Many people make mistakes when they, mo when they uh, move into relationships. We have a relationship with our lover, with our boyfriend, our girlfriend, our husband, our wife. And it seems hunky-dory and peachy keen for the first two, three, four years. And then, all of a sudden, something hits the wall. Okay? Along the way, we, we saw these little flares. We saw that something was going wrong, but we didn't pay attention to them. And then that soulmate, all of a sudden, is not so much a soulmate. So we want to acknowledge that everything can serve us, even the souls of something unpleasant, like an argument or a negative thought about your gray hair, your, your wrinkle, your this, your that. Okay? All of those have a soul and they are there to serve us. What is the service that they are offering us? What do you think? It is the opportunity to see where we are separating ourself from our soul and from our beloved Creator. That's what everything is offering us. Regardless of how we view it, if we, if we put the label on it that it's a negative experience, then that's how we'll view it. If you've been any time around Dr. Master Shah, somebody spills something. What's the typical response from a parent when the child spills water, throws his food on the table, whatever it might be? Oh! Okay, that shocks the energy, the frequency. Dr. Shah, very smart. Oh! Financial blessings whenever water is spilled. Great! Anything that happens, it doesn't matter what it is. If there is any kind of a knee-jerk response that most people would deem it as a negative, he twists it, turns it, and immediately gives it an energetic power. Wow, that's great that that happened. That is the wisdom of a great master. That is the wisdom that we need to apply in every area of our life, regardless of what it comes at us. We must see it and say, this is part of something that I brought in the, in the, in the entirety of, of my life manifestation and somehow it will serve me I just have to pay attention to it open my heart with love and do the best I can to deal with it if it's something in a relationship with a spouse or a child or whatever it might be we say ah oh, I see this argument with my spouse I love you thank you for the opportunity to recognize that I am bringing myself to this relationship in a way that maybe isn't the best for us. I will look at what I am doing wrong. Now, I had a relationship where, um, and this was earlier before in the current marriage, but my spouse was not very good at uh, expressing herself. And I have my own attachments. I have big attachments to to expressing myself very clearly. You might notice that when I talk to you, I have uh, good expression abilities, right? But when I express myself, I also have an expectation that it will be heard and understood. And when it is not, and I have to repeat myself, I get irritated. That's a personal blockage. But if I blame the other person for not paying attention, if I blame the other person for not paying attention, then that's denial. That's not taking responsibility. And so I have to look at, okay, what can I do? Because it's not the other person's fault of their inability to, to, to hear me. I have to change my verbiage. I have to learn to communicate better. I have to let go of my attachment that things will be understood the first time regardless of how much effort I might put into it. That's just an example for you. When I chatted um, with, with a mentor at that time, they said, you know, this is really a point of where compassion needs to come in. Where there is anger, where there is irritation, where there is discord and separation, there is a lack of compassion. What the appropriate response would be is compassion. But I did not have that. That's where my growth is. We all have to take a look at that for ourselves when we go into a relationship with a spouse. I can pull everybody on here today and 100% of you will have had problems with the spouse. 100% of you would be pointing at them like this at least 50% of the time. It's their fault. They do this. They do that. They, do this. they don't respect this. They don't respect that. In relationships, rarely 
if ever, is it about the other person. We have a choice to not be in that relationship, first of all. But if we're in it, and it's not um, you know, truly abusive, if it's, if it's something that is, can be worked on with an open heart and there is love, then the working on it is here, not outside of you. And it starts by recognizing what, what is happening when I, when I am angry at that condition. When I am angry about this, or angry about, when I am fearful about this, or fearful about that, one, one of the people that is, wants to be a client with, with me on the Soulmate program has a lot of fear around relationships, about that spouse um, maybe not being honest, uh, uh, a philanderer, or whatever it might be. Now, the spouse has never done anything to cause that, but that person holds on to that. So that fear um, is a it's, it's theirs. They have to take responsibility for it. In Ma Dr. Master Shah's teaching, that would be, uh, there would be a couple of variables. One is there's blockages in a, the relationship in the emotional body. Another is on the physical area of the kidneys. Another teaching that he would share is that it is uh, potentially a negative soul memory, okay? A memory in which this person has experienced that from the past and it's sitting in their auric field and it's being projected into the future. So what happens when we bring our fears, our worries, our distrust, our anger, our whatever into a relationship and we point the finger at somebody else, it's not going to help. It's not going to help the relationship. It's going to close your heart and we're going to move further and further away from love. We're going to move further and further away from a healing and healthy relationship. So how do we reverse that? There are four steps. The first one is to awaken to take responsibility. That's the first step. It requires you to turn the finger and say this is where I have to take a look at. It's not easy. It's much more easy to be the victim. It's much more easy to blame somebody else. But it's not going to serve you. The second is to look at exactly what is occurring. What are the words that are being said? What is underneath that? What are the feelings and, and needs underneath that for yourself? What am I feeling right now? I'm feeling resentment. What am I needing? I'm needing validation. Well, your expectation is that the other person will give you the validation. But why are you needing the validation? Go deeper. Maybe it's because you have a lack of self-worth. You need validation from somebody else because you don't have enough self-love. But it started with pointing at somebody else saying it's their fault. If you take it backwards, you start to realize that it boils back to a lack of self-love. If we had enough of that, we could be compassionate, fully present. We would not be bringing ourselves to irritating others. So a lot of people have joined. I'm going to acknowledge uh, all the new people that have joined. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, Madeline, uh, Madalia from Australia. Great to see you. Sophie Ann, Kat Kat, uh, Monica, and Leon. Kristen, Yvonne, Tina, great to see all of you. Eoline, Rianne, and Liz, wonderful to see all of you. Thank you so much for joining. If you missed any part of the first part, please go back and watch again. I'm on a roll. I've got some good stuff coming out. A lot of this is in my Soulmate Attraction system, but it's mostly about a recognition that the soul of a relationship and how we bring ourselves to that relationship has a unique connection. Your, your spouse, they have a soul and their soul has its own journey. Same for you. You have a soul and your soul has its own journey. You are not, at least according to everything I've come to understand, meant to bring half of yourself and they bring half of themselves and you come together and try to fix each other. That is not what has ever worked uh, in my observation. When I work with my clients, what I very, very, very often see is that they're one-third full, one-quarter full, one-half full of love. Their heart is semi-open, semi-not open because they haven't taken responsibility for where they are at. Okay? And when they go through the steps of stopping, 
taking responsibility, catching the self-talk that denies love to self, catching the um, times when they're pointing their finger at their spouse. If they stopped and said, well, wait a minute, what's going on here? What am I feeling? What am I needing? I'm feeling this. I'm feeling anger. I'm feeling upset. I'm feeling frustrated. I'm feeling da 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 What am I needing? Okay? Because needing is very important. But to put the onus on the other to fulfill that need, big no-no. We have to fulfill it ourselves with our own self-love with God. We, we, if we continue to ask the other to fulfill our heart, um, how often can they do that? How much gas is in their tank? Okay? They're expecting us to fill their heart. How much can we give them when our batteries are drained? We have to fill up our own heart by ourselves. Then we can bring two full gas tanks, two full hearts to a relationship. Then we can give unconditionally. It's very important to comprehend the bigger picture. So, four steps. First step, recognition. Acknowledgement, awareness. Second step, what is it that I'm self-saying to myself that puts myself down, that keeps me out of self-love? What is it that I'm blaming upon another? Okay? So, waking up to this is truly a key. When we identify that verbiage, whatever it is, we just give it love and step it backwards. This has a soul. That negative self-talk has a soul. I'm too fat. Nobody will love me. I'm too this. Nobody will love me. I'm too that. I have, a, 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 I have six toes. How will anybody ever love me? Simple. Dear God, please bring me somebody that loves people with six toes or unique features on their body. They're just enamored by it. You know how many people are in this world? Seven billion. Half of them are the sex that you prefer. That's 3.5 billion. If only 10%, only 10% were interested, then you're looking at uh, uh, 3.5 million people. If of those 3.5 million people, only 10% of those fit the category that you're looking for. That's still 350,000 people of the sex that you prefer, of the age group that you prefer, out of 7 billion. There's still 350,000 that are exact and perfect for you. I don't think you have enough time for all the dates. Feels good, doesn't it? It's about changing your perspective. We must take a look at ourself and turn around the negative self-talk. Okay? You have gray hair? I only attract a mate that loves my gray hair. Whatever it is, turn it into a positive. Love yourself. This is how we can do it on the physical level. We're very blessed that Dr. and Master Shah has given us tools to transform things about a million times faster. Dr. Master Shah brought to us the acknowledgement of soul power and he speaks that everything has a soul. Everyone and everything is here to serve us. When we look at, um, for example, a past relationship, they impact our current relationships. They impact how we position ourselves so that we can make sure we're good in this relationship. They impact the questions we ask of that person so we can make sure they're not lying. They bring us to a place where we learn a lot, but we're also protective a lot. Is that opening or closing our heart? So we have to pay attention to all the different ways that we're harming ourselves. In Dr. Master Shah's book, Divine Transformation, this is probably one of the best books I've come across for healing relationships. And he goes through about six different practices for relationships of different kinds. And I'll be using several of them through this series of uh, teachings on relationships. For some that just come on, I see some new names. Uh, I want to uh, stop and acknowledge some of the new folks that have come in. So welcome, 
Uh, Raven, great to see you. Welcome, Dove. Welcome, Pamela. Welcome, Shannon Rose. Uh, Loveness, wonderful to see you. Yvonne and Norma, thank you all for joining. Really appreciate you showing up today. So, most of us have received some downloads and treasures. I am going to offer one right now. So, for those that are new to Dr. Master Shah's teaching, he is a world renowned healer, teacher, and servant to humanity. He has received extraordinary authorities to offer healing blessings to people. And uh, he's got a report card that's about 20 years long. So, you can do your own homework as far as the efficacy. But in terms of this master and his power, he puts power into books. I am a worldwide representative of Dr. Master Shah, and I bow down to this master because he is truly benevolent. Um, with the authorities I have received, I can offer to all of you a blessing. This blessing is called a soul, mind, body transplant. This one is for say so I offered that one yesterday so I will offer compassion today so this is a, a divine order of the divine rainbow light bulb and la rainbow liquid spring of divine compassion it is a, a rainbow light bulb that comes from heaven it will be transmitted to your soul and it carries extraordinary healing and transforming abilities not enough time to explain if it's not something that you're interested in then just, just tell Divine, uh, no thank you, I'll check it out, maybe receive it later. If it is, um, then please open your heart to receive. Everybody prepare to receive, because we will use this transmission to do practices, to clear the blockages, to help ourselves in our relationships. Okay? Dear Master Shah, I love you, honor you, respect you, bow down to you. Through the authority transmitted to me, I ask that you transmit this divine order for the rainbow light bulb to all those watching on the video today, all those that watch us in the future, as appropriate. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody sit up straight, back away from the back of the chair, put your feet flat on the floor, close your eyes, put a smile on your face, touch your tongue to the roof of your mouth gently. This connects the energy and matter channel. Prepare to receive. If you calm yourself, you may feel something as this comes in. Divine order, divine rainbow light ball, divine rainbow liquid springs of divine compassion. Soul transplant to everybody watching everybody who watches this in the future transmission divine order divine rainbow light ball and divine rainbow liquid spring of divine compassion mind transplant transmission divine order divine rainbow light ball divine rainbow liquid spring of divine body transplant divine compassion body transplant transmission divine order divine rainbow light ball divine rainbow liquid springs of divine compassion soul mind body transplants join as one transmission hey yeah yeah hey yeah yeah you 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 turn on 24 7 transmission so you are all very 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 blessed very blessed I would do a soul reading for you for all the new folks so you understand what you received. How? This is the soul of the rainbow light and rainbow liquid spring of divine compassion it is my greatest honor to be offered to be transmitted to all of you use me to serve humanity use me to serve your children use me to bless those at the hospital 
Use me to love yourself when you are crying in your ice cream. Use me to bless that person on the street as you drive by. My service should not be limited to self. I am compassion. I am the Divine's compassion. What is my service? Compassion is a judgment-free love. It is an acknowledgement of the Divine Perfection in that soul that I am offered to. It is a nurturing salve on the wound, the exposed wound of that most beautiful soul that is in such a deep place of suffering. I am and have always been present, but ill-used. Most do not even know of my existence because they are so withdrawn and unaware. I come to you and I desire so much to serve hundreds, thousands and millions. Please invoke me. Let me serve. It is my greatest honor. How? How? Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we will uh, use this beautiful soul today, but we will also remember to use it to serve others. And uh, one of the one of the truly um, most powerful statements. Uh, I, I will say it every time I can remember to say it because it is so true. When we remember to use a, ser uh, a servant like like this rainbow light ball, rainbow liquid spring of divine compassion to serve others, especially when we're in a point of suffering. That is where we will get the highest blessings. We suffer financially, use this to serve all those that are also suffering financially. We're suffering in relationship, use this to bless all those others that are suffering in relationship. It is the selfless service to others that truly brings the greatest reward to us. If we do it on purpose, the reward will be small. If we're truly unconditional, heaven will reward us with tremendous flowers. So this is uh, an, an, an ancient, ancient wisdom that goes all the way to original creation because it is original creation thinking. Love is unconditional. So let us now apply for those with the book, I'm going to page 120, 121. And we're going to do a forgiveness practice. I'll read it right out of the book. You would repeat uh, on your end, uh, but do follow the four power technique, okay? So again, some of them might be new. So the four powers is body power, soul power, mind power, and sound power. Body power is placing our hands in a position where we're connecting our heart and heaven. It's very much like a prayer position, but we drop the left hand in front of our heart center. And then the right hand remains pointed very gently towards heaven. This is like a conduit. It runs through the right hand and then straight into the heart center. This is also called the Solite Era hand position. We'll get the most benefit if our back is away from the back of the chair. This allows the energy and the frequencies to flow through us unencumbered. This is body power. Mind power, we're going to see a rainbow light ball. And now we're going to ask this to bless uh, our spouse relationships today. So we're going to invite the soul of our spouse. I'll do that in a minute. And your visualization. Uh, if you don't have a spouse, you can invite the soul of your future soulmate, okay? Uh, we're going to visualize this rainbow light ball surrounding the both of you. For... Um, uh, Sound power, I will, I'll repeat it in a minute, but it's uh, divine compassion, rainbow light ball, clears all my relationship karma with my spouse. <coughs> I'll repeat it in a minute, okay? 
soul power. This is what's important. Close your eyes. This is the fourth power, soul power. Repeat after me. Dear soul, mind, and body of divine rainbow light ball and divine rainbow liquid spring of divine compassion, I love you, honor you, and I appreciate you. You have the power to clear my soul, mind, body blockages in my relationships with my spouse or my future soulmate. You have the power to help them to forgive me of my mistakes in the past and in this lifetime and to heal our relationship. I am very grateful. I cannot thank you enough. Dear all souls whom my ancestors and I have hurt in all lifetimes, we sincerely apologize. We cannot honor you enough. Dear all souls who have harmed me in all lifetimes, I completely forgive you. Please accept my forgiveness. Thank you. I'm going to add a little bit more, so keep your eyes closed. Continue to repeat. Dear the soul of my spouse or my future soulmate, I love you. Please forgive me if in this or any lifetime I have harmed you physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. If I have brought discord in finances and relationship. If I have made promises to you and broken them. If I have created a lack of trust or fear in your love for me. I deeply and sincerely apologize. If you have brought any of these conditions to me, I wish to offer you my unconditional forgiveness. Please join me at this time, my beloved spouse or soulmate, and let us do this practice together and their soul has come at this time. So we will chant, Divine Compassion, Rainbow Light Ball, heals my relationships. Divine Compassion, Rainbow Light Ball, heals my relationships. Visualizing the Rainbow Light Ball surrounding your relationship with your spouse or your soulmate. Continue. Divine Compassion, Rainbow light ball heals my relationships. Divine compassion. 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 Rainbow light ball heals my relationships. Divine compassion, rainbow light ball, heals my relationships. I want you to continue to chanting silently. Divine compassion, rainbow light ball, heals my relationships. Divine compassion, rainbow light ball, heals my relationships. And as you're silently chanting, I will offer you a soul reading, a third eye reading as to what is happening for all of you at this time. The divine compassion rainbow light ball has activated. It is in each of your message center, the heart center, it is radiating out a most amazing glow. It is very much like a flame, but going in 360 degrees. And the flame has all of the colors of the rainbow. Each of the colors is bringing healing 
to a certain aspect that separates you from your connection to yourself and to the divine. The same thing is occurring for your spouse, for your potential soulmate. There is a gap between you and the spouse and that is the relationship. This rainbow light ball of compassion is offering a different kind of blessing to the relationship. It looks more like the rainbow itself. It is creating a harmonization of the various times and lifetimes in which there has been discord in the relationship. As each of you are receiving the incredible blessing that is now expanding into the other energy centers, into the mind. There, there, there are very specific mindsets, self-beliefs that are very, very, very compassionately and being they're being like whittled loose just like 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 a very flat blade going up underneath something that doesn't want to move and very gently and lovingly lifting it up so that it can float away so such great love that this light is vibrating these blockages loose there are messages that are being offered to each of you the messages are the messages of divine compassion. I will ask those messages now. Continue to chant silently. I am the message of Creator's compassion. I come to each of you to remind you of your perfection, to remind you of your oneness and your love for each other, even though you see yourself as separate. I offer this message to every cell, every speck of you that has ever existed is receiving my message. There are many souls that have never heard this since beginning of creation. They have forgotten their original perfection. And with my transmission to your soul. The message is now returned. How? 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. Divine compassion, rainbow light bulb, blesses my relationships. 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 Divine compassion, rainbow light, blesses my relationships. Divine compassion, rainbow light bulb, blesses my relationships. See the light connecting you and your spouse. See their rainbow light and your rainbow light in your heart centers getting so big and so bright that they're overcoming each other and becoming one. See it radiating in the relationship itself. Divine compassion, rainbow light bulb blesses our relationship. 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 Silently repeat after me. Dear my divine compassion, rainbow light bulb, I love you. 
I truly, truly appreciate you. Can you please turn on and stay on? Continue to bless my relationship with my spouse or my soulmate. Please bless us to clear the blockages so that we can be more loving and compassionate to each other so that we can grow our relationship to be better servants for humanity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. So you may now all check in. How are you feeling? What did you see? What was your experience? Does your heart feel more open than when you came? Please share. I only have about six or seven minutes left before I have to sign off or Facebook will sign me off without me wanting to go. I'd like to read some of your posts. So that was truly a beautiful message from the soul of the uh, transmission that you all received. It's something that I have found that when I connect with the soul of all of all of the beautiful things that are out there, they all have so much wisdom to share with us. I'm so grateful to Master Shah for having these soul reading abilities. Truly uh, uh, remarkable. To all those that are new, um, if you're more interested more in what soul readings are, what soul healing is, what the Soulmate program is, anything uh, along these subjects, of course, you can go to Dr. Master Shah's website, drsha.com. My website is listed above this video. If you've enjoyed this and you want to know when my other live streams are, just look in the upper, uh, I think it's the upper right hand corner of your video, it's something like follow or something like that and then you'll get notified when I go live. So Monica said, I felt the rainbow between my heart and her husband's heart. Beautiful. Don D says, divine compassion and rainbow light is going to help my marriage. Absolutely. <clears throat> and again, Practice is really key. The reason this works is very simple. It's not, it's not, you know, my rainbow light ball. It's not Don's rainbow light ball or Monica's rainbow light ball. It's the divine's rainbow light ball. And the divine's love, forgiveness, compassion, and light has a far higher frequency than ours. We're down here in the mud trying to figure this stuff out. So these blessings of receiving such an incredible treasure, we, we just have to, to, to practice with them. It will transform the blockages. All it takes is time and some practice. Uh, you know, pay attention to all of the, the teachings and wisdoms that this, this most incredible master has brought to earth. Uh, when you do it, things will change. There's no question about it. So Pamela says, Mahalo for the practice, Master Paul. I actually checked out and don't hear the message, so I will have to listen. <laughs> I understand. Frequencies. Crystal says, wow, Master Paul, so beautiful and heartfelt. My heart feels so much lighter and I feel like I can breathe better. Wonderful. Such a great honor and service to offer this to our spouse and our relationship. Yes. Every day. Dear my rainbow light ball for compassion, please turn on. Please bless the relationship between me and my spouse as I'm going about my business today. Uh, you know, I will chant you as much as I remember. Please go to my spouse also. You can ask this to subdivide and go to your spouse. It's a part of you, but you can ask it to please subdivide, go to my spouse, bless him. You might be surprised. Maybe your spouse comes home and you have a lot more romance. Yay, good for romance. So Monica says, and when we start chanting faster, I felt a divine compassion rainbow light ball spinning so fast and rotating in her husband's heart and hers. So warm and comforting. Suki says, beloved Master Paul, thank you for the practice. I have enough felt so light and loving in my entire life. What am I feeling now? I feel the abundance of love and I can feel my soul smiling. Such beautiful sharing. Makes me so happy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So um, we will continue next week, Monday through Friday. I do these live streams, 2 o'clock Hawaii time, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, um, and so forth, depending on where you're at in the world. <coughs> and 
uh, it's a great opportunity. The, the blessings and the teachings happen in each, each one of these. Sometimes I do offer transmissions. Sometimes I do individual soul readings. If you'd like your own soul readings, please come to my website. You can learn more there. You can always message me through Facebook. Happy to chat with you. Um, and then so Monday, I will continue on the relationship track. Uh, maybe we'll do family. I'm not sure. We'll fit, see what guidance, uh, divine guidance says to do. But I'm truly happy to see so many new faces today. And I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.